Welcome to Quiltinator.com. I'm Michelle Johnson. This is Little Fall Dreams, and I made this about a year ago. I'd like to show you this quilting pattern. And my friends said it looked like Hawaiian flowers, so that's why I'm calling it Hawaiian flowers. This is the original fabric that I started with. And then I quilted it using a brown silk thread for the top and then bottom line on the bottom. You'll notice here, that's the cups and saucers or teacups and saucers or sometimes it's called orange peel. That's that pattern. And then all I did was fill in the little scribbles. This is what my friends have asked that I show you how to do. Now the reason I kind of would have a, a little ten, uh, hesitancy to show it to you is because I feel like if you have, if you're watching this, you probably have some sort of um, hindrance to your quilting. Me with fibromyalgia you have, you know, arthritis or something else, you don't always have full use of your fingers. So you want to get something done quickly. This, this pattern right here, it takes quite a long time. And I will show you that I have done two blocks. This one you can see much better. You can see in this one, it's the same thread, same pattern, but it's lost because it's so busy and it just ends up being a texture. And it's pretty much very similar colors. The back, however, has a little bit more of a difference and you can see the actual quilting. So, and this one still, I still have to bury thread, so that's why those little strings are hanging loose. But it takes a lot of thread. Those two blocks took two bobbins, and this is the last of the second bobbin. And if you, I don't I hope you can tell, there's at least a quarter, not quite half of this bobbin is gone, but between a quarter and a half. It, it takes a while. Now, how I came up with this pattern is I was looking through some Zentangles and I'm gonna show you the Zentangles pattern I found. I don't know who came up with this Zentangles pattern. I'd like to give credit where credit is due. I just don't know. I found it on the internet on Pinterest. And I took a piece of paper and I practiced drawing it out and my drawing it out does not look anything like what theirs looks like. And then when I started quilting it, my quilting does not like, look like what that started out as either. You can see it still has the, the little three little arcs or little um, little um, teardrop shapes and that I have gone around and you can do anything that you want. I did kind of rounded but you could do flower petals that were pointed. You could make sure you put in flower or lots of flowers like echoed it two or three times if you put in um, leaves, and a few of mine actually have leaves, and there are some kind of feather kind of shapes in there, but they're not really feathers. They're just things that could kind of lay on it and fill in those little spots. You can do whatever you want. Now, I'm thinking if you could make this pattern bigger, I have a hard time quilting larger. But if you could, I'm 
I think this could go pretty quickly, especially if you're just doing a lot of echoes around it. So I'm going to show you how to do this real quick. And just remember, this really takes quite a bit of time. And I think it took me probably two and a half hours per block. And so, of course, I was taking little breaks and have to come back to it. So I'm going to show you how it's done now. I wanted to show you that I have pinned the edge of the blocks. I haven't actually pinned the block itself, but just to show me where the batting is at, because it's going to get squished down. And that just gives me a kind of reference. As you can see, I'm just using Hobbs 8020, regular batting inside of it. And so now I'm just going to put on my gloves. I've already pulled the, bob, the bobbin thread up. And then how to start this design. Well, if you remember from looking at the original design, it had three little kind of banana shapes, I guess. Little crescents. And so you can do teardrops or crescents, and I do a mixture. And the first thing I do, oops, if I can pull the, to the side. Oops, maybe if I put my foot down. Okay. So stitch in, and then lock it a little. And then one more. Okay, so now what do I do? You've got your little three pieces in there and depending on the shape of the petals is going to be completely up to you. But what I do is I just kind of pull around, make an arc, and I don't go all the way to the bottom. And then I go right back to my starting position. So you can kind of see there, it kind of looks like a cotton ball almost. And then, now you can echo this, but right now I'm not going to. But I am going to go from this position, just because this is an opportunity to do something a little bit different than the regular. I'm going to do, there's one. And then here's a second little kind of teardroppy shape on the bottom side of the bottom of that flower. So now I'm just going to do the same thing and I'm going to go around, just put a couple of little loops. And now this kind of looks like a flower. So now this time I am going to echo back because when I started this, I did not start exactly in the middle. I started kind of towards this corner a little bit. And what I want to do is try to fill up this corner first before I work my way around the block. Kind of working in a quadrant. So if you think of it as four pieces in this quadrant, is where I'm going to try to work. So I'm going to echo back. And you don't have to be exact. You could do something different. Okay. So this is out of the way. And you can see I've got part of the petals there. And I'm going to kind of go back along the petals. And now I'm going to do my little teardrop shape. Now I can go right in the same one, but I'm going to just go over just a little bit and then make a second one. Now a third. Now you really could make these much larger than what I'm doing, what you see me doing. And 
then I'm filling up this space here. I'm kind of curving it in. And it doesn't matter that I didn't go right back on that line because it's going to give us a texture. And actually, I'm just going to be filling this in so much. Here's one. Scooch over. Two. Scooch over just a little bit more. Three. Now, if you notice with this one, I'm on the one petal. I'm even towards the inside of that petal. So to fill up this area, instead of, um, I mean, I can go right from that little, right from the edge there and loop out enough. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in like a stitch or so, almost to that other one. And I'm going to get as close to it as I can. And then I'm going to make my loop or my petal. Another petal. And again, I'm going to try to make that arc into the previous. So that way it fills up that space. And if you look here, I'm going to have a teeny tiny triangle. That does not bother me because it is so small, smaller than my quilting design. Probably won't be noticed, but if it bothers you, you just put in another one of these mini teardrops. Now you got something in there. So now you have a space. What do you do? Well, you can decide in that little V shape whether you want to do one or you want two or do you want to use it as a spot to echo out. And so let's try echoing for this one. Just so I can get back into my spot. Again, I'm left with a little channel of something. How do you fill that? Well, I am actually going to do a little teardrop, do a second teardrop that's coming right against it, and a third. So as you can see, you can do whatever shape you want. It's not a big deal. You're just going to end up with a really nice texture. And now I'm filling it in all the way over here. And I'm going and touching through so it fills up and leaves me another little triangle. Just nesting it right in there. So now I've got a really nice spot to start with a teardrop. Go on to either side. Teardrop. I don't want these all to be the same shape. I don't want them to be the same size. I really want them varied. So let's say here again, I'm left with a little squarish point to meet. So either I could, I could do the same thing and come back, go off there, but sometimes you just want to fill up a space with something a little different just to add some dimension. So, I come in and kind of make a little feather shape. And you could do one, you could do three, you could do, it doesn't matter. It's just up to you. Do I want to add another one onto this? 
And actually, my little feather shape looks look more like a crescent moon there. More like a little Nike symbol. But that just gave me a whole new area to put something in. I have just moved my camera and hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing a little bit better. And I've gotten the three little arky kind of things. But I want you to see here there is a open area that I need to fill up. How do I fill that? Well from my last little arc kind of banana shape. Actually I think that one's kind of a triangle shape. I'm gonna go down along and now I'm going to halfway through, maybe a little more, I'm gonna start an arc or a petal shape And now I have kind of filled up that little space. If that bothers you again, you can just put another little something in there. And what I'm going to do now is just right off of this shape, I'm gonna go backwards and I'm gonna put in a couple of the little teardrops. And then I'm gonna travel down that flower petal, travel down the petal some more, okay now fill it in, can be large, can be small, and I made this last petal a little bit larger because it needs to fill or at least touch that other flower that's over on this other side. And then I'm going to kind of echo, but I'm going to travel and fill up that one spot. And now I'm back over to where I want to be. And I will just travel at the edge of the flower petal. Now, I don't have to do the three. You could have as many as you wanted. We went off three because that was the Zentangle design was three. And so now, And then again, I'm trying to get really close to these other ones, to the very next set of petals, because you're going to end up with these little channels to fill up. Again, that's why echoes are so great, because they can fill that up, but you don't have to do the echoes. You could just put a teardrop and start another flower. And that's what I'll do here just to show you. So there's that one. And now I'm going to pretend it's a flower. And have a teardrop. So now it's kind of like behind another one. And that's what a flower vase from the top would look like. Is kind of all mixed and mashed together. If you give this pattern a try, the Hawaiian flowers as my friends have named it, I'd like to know how it went for you. Was it easy? Did you have to change up the pattern a bit? Did you make it larger with lots of echoes and it go pretty quickly for you? I'm really curious to know how other people work with it. I'm Michelle Johnson, this is Quiltinator.com, and I am getting back to quilting.